Hi there. This is a video about the slow death of Longwave. Um, those of you that have been a subscriber of my channel since I started it in 2015, uh, well, some of you at least will know that uh, Longwave is my favourite band um, and it has been dying a slow death since then. Um, I can't really uh, imagine there being no broadcast signals left on Longwave, although that day may well be coming. Um, for me, it all started when I was a kid. Uh, I got into radio at a very young age. You've seen some of the receivers that I owned. And um, from the age of you know eight or nine, I wanted a shortwave radio um, and didn't get one until I was 16. Uh, but what I did have was... Uh, a radio that covered long wave, medium wave, and FM. Um, and so long wave was the one band that you could listen to at night, the volume turned low, uh, and hear foreign stations, um, but but li but hear them differently to how you would listen to them on medium wave, where conditions of propagation change very rapidly, and obviously... Um, AM medium wave signals, essentially being sky wave, suffer from uh, dynamic changes in propagation, fading in or out, you know, etc. Um, QS Baker, QRM, you know, uh, channels overloaded, with long wave being uh, the propagation, you know, being um, dominated as a ground wave, then if you can hear a foreign station or a distant station on long wave then you can hear it and there's you know there's never any fading um some of the long wave stations from even a few years ago were so powerful you could hear them during the day as well and i think that it was as a kid not having access to a shortwave radio um and having you know essentially being used to listening to stuff on medium wave and not hearing it very well um, you could listen to you know European stations on long wave uh, very clearly, and I think that's kind of where it started. I can remember with using the Hitachi radio that I got for my birthday. Well, actually, no, I got it for Christmas um, as a replacement to a, a cheaper radio that I got. Um, you you would have seen it on on my previous video. Um, particularly with that radio, I used to stay up really late into the early hours of the morning. Uh, tuning through long wave, listening, you know, listening to those foreign stations, tuning through the uh, non-directional beacons that I could hear in AM, not really understanding what they are, um, and it's kind of stuck with me. Um, and since I got back into DXing into radio in 2015, so eight years ago, um, the long wave band um, has further diminished. Um, so I, I thought I would do a review on what's happened in the past few years. Um, but I wanted to start by going back back a bit further in time. I had this kind of romantic vision that um, that in years gone by, during the golden years of Longwave, that there were like hundreds or thousands of stations on Longwave, and of course that was never the case because you know the Longwave band is only about 150 kilohertz wide, um, whereas you know the medium wave band. Um, you know, is more than a megahertz wide, so that so that that was never going to be the case. So what I did was I went back through a few old editions of the World Radio and TV Handbook, started with 1976, and checked it out, and there were 72 stations listed on Longwave in 1976. Um, fast forward uh, 22 years to 1998, and there were 58 stations uh, listed um, fast forward again to 2016 which is the first WRTH edition I bought when I got back into radio <clears throat> and it had gone down to 28 stations and then in 2023 the latest edition there are 18 stations listed now the 2023 and 2016 editions include multiple transmissions so for example radio 4 on 198 kilohertz um uh, on long wave includes uh, the lower power uh, transmission sites so you know that's kind of where we are in 76 when i was a very small child there were 72 stations in 2023 there are 18 so obviously numbers have diminished as as, as we all know um 
but it seems to be accelerating. So if we now go through those stations that have left the band um, since I got into back into radio in, in 2015. So France Inter on 162 kilohertz, which as you now know is basically a long wave time signal from uh, Aloui, started um, broadcasting in 1952 and closed down on the 31st of December 2016. Um, these the, uh, the image that you can see is a signal uh, as received by 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 myself and then in 2019 the signal from Europe 1 Felsberg on 183 kilohertz shut down uh, again on the 31st of December uh, they started in 1955 um, Radio Zernal from um, the Czech Republic on 270 kilohertz to Polna the transmitter site um, they've been broadcasting on that frequency since 1989 they shut down on the 31st of December 2021 um, and then RTL 234 kilohertz from uh, Bidweiler shut down on the 31st of December uh, 2022 and they've been transmitting on that frequency since 1932 uh, um, I, uh, RTE Radio 1 Two five two kilohertz uh, shut down uh, in April uh, of this year. They'd been transmitting since nineteen eighty nine, um, and RUV Iceland two oh seven from uh, IDAR uh, shut down also in twenty twenty three at the end of February, um, and they had been broadcasting since nineteen thirty eight. So you know some of these stations have been around you know 90 years uh and you know so you know and those are the stations that have closed just since i've been listening to the radio since i started the channel basically um the other one worth mentioning is tr1 watan radio i'm from turkmenistan uh 279 kilohertz i used to copy their signal a few years ago um albeit with very poor modulation um and as you can see, the the World Radio and TV Handbook 2023 20, edition um, doesn't include that station um, in their listing. So as far as they're concerned, the station no, is no longer on air. I don't know um, whether that's true or not. WRTH is usually pretty accurate, but I, I have seen, I get a couple of um, newsletters sent to me every month. And uh, that reports are coming in that TR1 on 279 kilohertz is still going, um, but uh, uh, obviously either a very weak signal and or with you know very poor modulation. So I guess the jury's still out on whether TR1's dead or not, but certainly not listed um, in the World Radio and TV handbook. So what's next? What's closing down next? Well, RUV Iceland. Um, 189 kilohertz is going to stop transmitting next year 2024 um, that's their transmitter site in uh, Gafuskala uh, it's a real shame I really enjoy listening to um, Iceland on long wave and have done so for several years now um, but they're stopping in 2024 uh, following on from closure of the uh, IDAR signal 207 kilohertz um, DR uh, Langbolge 243 kilohertz apologies if I incorrectly pronounced that from Kaulenborg they're stopping on the 31st of December 2023 this year um, that's a real shame um, that station has been on air for a long time and um, for me the best interval signal on the radio um, harks back to the golden days of radio and um yeah it, that for me would be a particularly sad day when um when that signal on 243 and the, the those chimes uh of their interval signal can no can no longer be heard uh real shame and then closer to home the bbc have been sort of beating around the bush a little bit but finally announced that um 
the BBC Radio 4 and 198 kilohertz signal from Droitwich and a couple of other transmitters will also close in 2024. And, you know, that that's a real shame. It, it, you know, it really is. Um, if for nothing else, I'm going to miss listening to ta- Test Match Special. So uh, listen to the cricket on Long Way in the garden, sat in the garden with a drink. It's the perfect way to do it. I know it's available on BBC Five Live, on DAB, etc., but it just won't be the same. Um, so, so yeah. So they're the next three stations scheduled to close um, in the coming months. So what are the reasons? Why are all these stations closing? Well, declining listener base is is often quoted. That goes for all AM radio, and that includes medium wave. Many stations in the UK and across Europe obviously have closed down on medium wave. DXs take that as well, uh, t- take a positive spin from that because as the, all the European uh, stations close, it opens up channels and pathways for North American, DX and South American. Um, so uh, from, from, the, from some uh, DXs, uh, every cloud has a silver lining. So as, as the as the Euro as the as the as the medium wave band empties itself of European stations, all the, it, it allows more DX through. Um, but it's also the reason cited by um, RT RTE Radio One said essentially the same thing. Um, energy costs exacerbated by Russia invading Ukraine, of course. Um, the somewhere I think I read somewhere that uh, the, the, a typical long wave transmitter these days costs one thousand eight hundred pounds a day to run because of the uh, energy costs, which I can imagine. Um, there's the cost and cost of maintenance for the transmitter, and, uh, antenna hardware, I guess that goes without saying. Um, and also techn- technological obsolescence. So basically, you know, you can hear all this stuff on other platforms. Um, you know, you can listen online on the internet, podcasts, you know, DAB, etc. So they're the reasons that are, that are cited for the closures, which, you know, I understand that. Um, do I agree with it? Not necessarily. Am I uh, in in a minority demographic as a someone who's um, very passionate about radio? Yes, probably. Um, so it's a shame, but um, you know, it's a fact of life that you know AM broadcasting costs a lot of money, and there are cheaper ways of doing it. You know, I still think it might be a mistake in today's volatile world. You know, when other types of when other platforms fail when other infrastructure fails radio can always be there um but you know it is it, it is what it is and that's where we are um so what's left well algeria are still on 153 as are romania um antenna satellite um there are still signals um being transmitted uh from mongolia to mongolia national radio services there's the 164 kilohertz signal, which I've, uh, I think that's the one I've heard audio. I've copied audio on faint audio, and um, every now and then you see um, the carrier on one of my SDRs. So um, Morocco, uh, Medi One from Nador, 171 kilohertz will still be there. Um, Iceland will be gone. Radio 4 will be gone. Um, Mongolia on 209 kilohertz, uh, and Polsky Radio on 225. Are still around um, and then you've got Mongolia again on 227 um, Denmark Kalenberg uh, will, will be gone uh, and then you have Algeria again on 252 who became obviously much more prominent when RTE shut down on the same frequency so so there you go there'll be three or four stations left on long wave in Europe and sort of North Africa, um, and you know, how long will they be on air? I, I don't know. Um, what's interesting is that I think Algeria is the largest country uh, in Africa. It's huge. I can't remember if it's like eight or nine times bigger than the UK. M- Morocco is a relatively large country, um, and obviously, long wave is useful for broadcasting across over large distances. So I don't know whether you know whether that makes lot the long wave broadcasting model um, uh, uh, a better fit for countries such as Algeria and Morocco where there might be less 
infrastructure and vast expanses um, of uh, uh, desert, etc. Um, so maybe, maybe uh, the, the transmission from uh, Nador, Morocco, and Algeria on one five three and uh, two five two kilohertz um, will remain. Obviously, the signal for on two five two they broadcast in French. Uh, the one five three signal broadcast in Arabic. <clears throat> so it's possible they will continue. Um, not sure about Poland. It's quite a large country. Um, be nice to to be nice to imagine that they would stay, but you know, uh, and same for Romania. Uh, Antenna satellite. I think it, it's it's basically a, uh, a a radio station that's um, uh, the demographic is basically for people living out in the countryside. Effectively, I can't remember the. There's a literal translation, but it's like almost someone Romanian will correct me, but you know countryside radio effectively um so i'd like to think that there would still be a couple of stations on long wave in a few years from now but um you know who knows uh, i'm not sure um it'd be nice actually if if new stations were to uh um were to come back and come on and come you know and get on air but again i think that's highly unlikely um but you never know so there you go so that's my brief summary of uh what's happened with long wave since I got back into radio I can't say anything other than it's it's a little bit depressing but um, it's a sign of the times and it's the way things are going and um, you know as I said the medium wave band is also emptying rather rapidly um, and it, it's a real shame it, as far as I'm concerned but uh, um, maybe I'll do another an, another video uh, in the same vein in a year from now and we'll uh and have another look but uh yeah i guess you know the technology has been around for more than a 100 years um and there have been transmissions on long wave for uh i think for about a 100 years um give or take um so it's quite amazing that what is essentially the same technology uh, you know the same fundamentals, the physics um, of the technology. You know is you know is it, is achieving the same thing. It's been around a hundred years. You know that's when radio started. Well, at least broadcast transmission started about a hundred years ago. Um, and you know that although in rapid decline now, it's still with us. So uh, um, you know there aren't many other areas of technology where. Uh, you know where you can say well you know that tech's been around for you know 10 decades and still going so there you go anyway i hope you enjoyed that um and uh thank you very much for watching and uh i'll catch up with you uh, on the channel um please leave your comments uh i very much appreciate them so uh, thank you very much uh 73